I'm the Grow Boss, I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, and this is another episode of Garden Rescue. Only this garden doesn't need to be rescued as much as most. So, keep watching, because we're going to go over everything you need to know about this garden, what's right and what's wrong. We're going to go over the lights, we're going to go over the canopy and the shape of it, the plant count, how often they're watering, and what PPM, nutrients, they're at. That way you can put it all together and see what goes right and what goes wrong. And maybe you'll learn something. I hope I do. Okay, before we get into all of it, I want to talk about the plant count first because you guys always come into my store and you tell me, oh man, I got like 10 plants or I don't need much light, so I only need like, you know, one plant. And I want you to stop thinking about plant count and I want you to start thinking about canopy because you look at the canopy here, there's a four by eight table and here's two four by four tables and you look at the canopy and you can see how full it is, right? But that doesn't tell you how many plants there is. For instance, all the canopies look pretty full, right? This is four plants, this is four plants, this canopy over here is three plants and this canopy behind me is two plants. That's why I'm telling you guys that you don't need to worry about plant count. What you need to worry about is light. That's why I tell you the first thing you need to know in any garden is how much yield you want. Because this is six pounds. This is one and a half pounds per thousand watt light. And this will be about six pounds dry. And it doesn't matter if it's if it's a pound and a half from three plants, or a pound and a half from two plants, or a pound and a half from four plants. The yield is based on the light. And that's why I tell you that plant count is irrelevant. You can have 49 plants per light, or you can have two plants per light. The yield is the same as long as you fill up that canopy full of tops. And that's one of the things I want to get into today is how many plants and how much canopy, because you always hear me talk about canopy, right? So one of the things that I always tell you guys is this, I don't care what week you fuck up in, if you fuck up in week one, by week 12, your buds are gonna run into the light and burn. And if you fuck up in week 12, your buds are gonna run into the light and burn. So I don't care when you fuck up. There's no one week in this whole process that's any more important than the rest. Doesn't matter when you fuck up, every week is equal because you have to get, you have to end up in this situation. Now, that said, when you go from veg into flower, always veg them too big. Because if you don't have a top in every hole, when you start flowering, it's not going to show up later because you're flowering, right? So at the end of veg, you're sort of locked in to the size of your flower based on veg light and flower light. So you can see there's no tops in these holes over here. The plants aren't as wide, and that's two plants. But even here in three plants, you can see there's still open tops. Now, this is only week three flowers, so there's five weeks to go, and you'll see this whole area will fill in and the buds will increase in diameter. But it doesn't matter if it's four plants, three plants, or two plants. The only difference is veg time. These were a little bigger because they were a little older. And same thing, four plants, but the most important thing is that you fill, it, to fill up the space. You can't have empty tops with no buds or you're not going to get the yield no matter how much light you have. Okay, so all these plants are in 10 gallon buckets and they're getting watered about every four to six days depending on the temperature of the room. That's another reason why I tell you, there's no set schedule. So when you guys come to my store and you tell me, oh, I water every three days. I, I, I don't know how you could know that unless you were, you know what I mean? Unless that was the very last second you could possibly water and you were waiting until the very end. But that's not how this works. You want to leave a little bit of a buffer, right? You want to be in a bucket so big that you only have to water about once a week at the start of veg. Then four weeks later at the end of veg, you'll be watering once every three days because the plant got bigger but the bucket stayed the same size. So let's say you vegged in a one gallon bucket and then you went to a three gallon bucket. Okay, if you were watering at the start of veg every seven days and then at the end of veg every three days in a one gallon, then when you went to a three gallon bucket, there'd be three times the media. So you'd be watering every nine days instead of every three days. But flowers eight weeks where veg is only four. So if you went from one week to three days in one month, 
then in two months you're probably going to go from watering every nine days or so to every two or three toward the end of flower. And this bucket size is an important thing. The transplanting is important, not necessarily because of the plant size. For instance, if you were to put a little plant in a big 10 gallon bucket, 99% of the dirt would be facing the light. You would literally be throwing the light at the floor. That's why when you have a small clump, a plant like this, you know, something like that, that's why you keep it in a small cup. So you can put many plants under one light, thereby dividing the light up over more plants. And where this thousand watt is over two plants, this thousand watts over four plants. If the canopy is the same height, why? Because we divide light by canopy or, or plant count. Either way though, you got to have the canopy because if we took one plant out of this garden, there would be the same light but 25% less plant. Those three plants would get more light and possibly it would be too much. So really what we're talking about is that relationship between dividing the light up and the canopy. Now if you take a little cutting and you put it in a red cup, you might be able to fit 200 under one of these lights, right? But if you put them in a 10 gallon pot, you might be able to fit eight or 10. Eight or 10 plants is not enough to go under a big light when they're small. You would need 100 of them and the light would have to be further away. But what I'm trying to get, get the idea across is the relationship between light and plant count. If you have a 100 watt light, you can grow 10 plants, 10 watts big. And if you have a 200 watt light, take a look at this picture, you can grow 10 plants, 20 watts big. Now look at lights three and four. They're the same as light two. They're all 200 watts. So how come the plants in the second row are so, the third and fourth row are so much bigger than the second row? And it's because there's half the plants. So even though light two, three, and four are the same, you can see that lights three and four have half the plants. So you have 200 watts and 10 plants. Each plant can grow 20 watts big. But if you have 200 watts and five plants, each plant can grow 40 watts big. That's because canopy size and light and plant count are all related. The longer you veg, the bigger they get, the fewer you need. I don't care if you do 200 1 watt plants, if you do 10 20 watt plants, or you do one 200 watt plants. A 200 watt light is going to get you 200 watts worth of canopy. That's why if you veg a 400 watt light, it's tough to go into flower with a thousand because what are you going to do? you got a 1,000 watt light and 400 watts worth of plant. You can't give 400 watts worth of plant, 1,000 watts worth of light, or it'll kill them. Now, these plants, when they came out of veg, they were under 1,000 watt lights. But the lights were a little further away in veg. They were still under 1,000 watts, but it was further away, so they were getting less light, but the intensity was still up there. Now, in a home grow, you probably wouldn't do that because you wouldn't have 1,000 watt veggies and 1,000 watt flowers. But here, when we're doing this many lights, you want the plants to start flowering as big and as fast as possible. That's why I tell you plant count is irrelevant. You need one top in every hole. Now, when you start, I told you earlier that when you start flowering, you want to grow veg too big. There's no one week that's any more important than any other, but you want to veg them too big. Because if you don't start flowering with enough plant material, if you don't start flowering with enough canopy, not plant count, canopy. If you don't start flowering with enough canopy with a top in every hole, how are you gonna put them later? Now, that said, different lights have different intensities. LEDs have a different intensity than CMHs and double ends and single ends. Like, you'd never put a double end this close. And you would, this is almost too close with this thousand watt light. You can start to see it in this leaf curling away, but these leaves down here look pretty good. So you can already see the band of too much light of what's happening in here because the plants are starting to get too close. Now, of course, these will be trellised or pulled down lower into the, into the tomato cages, but it's a real concern because there's still five weeks to go and the canopy is still growing. However, when you go from veg into flower, the important thing to remember is that you need one top in every hole. Then the next consideration is how much top do you need in every hole? Because these lights and double end lights have a lot of penetration. LED has even more penetration, but T5s and CMHs, which are longer, have less penetration. So when you go from veg to flower, let's say you have a, you're at home, you have a small grow, you got a 600 watt veg, 1000 watt flower. A 600 watt veg, a 600 watt light is a four by four space, two feet deep worth of bud. So that's what, 16, 32 feet. So if you fully expressed a 600 watt light, you would have something about 
you know, one by four by four, two feet deep, that you would pull into a trellis so you would physically lower the plant. The tops would no longer be two feet. You would pull them out and each square would have about a one foot top. You would do a one foot top with an LED, a double end and these HID lights. And you want a one foot top in each hole. Now a one foot top has the three nodes at the top. It has the next couple of nodes like that. That way, when you start flowering, you're going to get some bud down here. And as the top goes through the trellis, you're going to get 18 to 24 inches worth of bud, like you're starting to see here. And it will continue to develop during flower. Now, if your canopy is too shallow, so you only have this much top, you're never going to get 24 inches or 18 inches worth of bud. Now this much top would be more appropriate for like a CMH or a T5 light. So if you went into flower with a veg light that was a T5 or a CMH, or you're going into a T5 or a CMH, you're never going to finish a canopy this deep because T5s and CMHs don't penetrate that deep. These lights penetrate that deep. You can see even here below the lowest plants, there's light on my hand. Now this canopy could be a little fuller. This looks like it could have one more plant over here, so there were four. This one looks like it could have one more plant, so there was three to get more canopy. And they're going to have to be pulled further away from the light, because you can see. This one looks good. It's face up. The ridges, but it's going to only going to get closer. So the reason that I'm telling you and I keep suggesting about the distance from the light is because whenever you guys come to my store, you guys always tell me your lights are right on top of the plant. And if you have a light that has more penetration, like a DE or a single end or an LED, and they would have to be further away because the closer you get, the deeper the penetration, the narrower the light spreads out. So if you have an LED or something intense, you're generally going to grow taller plants because the light penetrates deeper. The same way a T5 spreads the light out over a greater area or a hood like this spreads the light out over a greater area than a, teeth, than a small two-foot hood, it decreases the penetration as it increases the coverage. So canopy, when I talk about a thousand watt light, it's five by five, two feet deep, it's 50 cubic feet. But I don't care if it's four by four, like three feet deep. You have to get 50 cubic feet to get that weight from a thousand watt light. Now, it would be tough to do like 25 feet by two feet. Or, you know what I mean? Like, it would be, you have to sort of keep them square. Now, if you put them on a light mover and you move it back and forth, you make a little rectangle out of it. And the light can be a little closer because the hot spot gets moved off the plant. But we're always talking about filling up this canopy. It always comes down to filling up this canopy, not plant count. Because I don't care if you put 100 plants under these two lights and you veg for one week. I don't care if you put 50 plants under these two lights and you veg for two weeks. I don't care if you put 25 plants under these two lights and you veg for three weeks. I don't care if you put 12 plants under these lights or veg for four weeks. I don't care if you put apparently eight plants and veg for six to eight weeks. I don't care how you do it. it. Plant count is irrelevant. You have to fill up the canopy. Now, it's an interesting perspective if you think about it because we're places where it's legal and you can go and buy clones. You can literally take a thousand watt light like this and you can go and buy 50 clones, veg them for a week and flower. So for a thousand watt light, you get like a harvest every nine weeks, but you would need 50 plants. And that sort of brings up an interesting point because there's this relationship between light and yield. And I'm gonna tie this all together into this garden here in a minute when we talk about plant count and yield and this light. So stay with me because I'll get there, I promise. Okay. So if you can buy lots of plants and you buy 50 plants per thousand, you're going to get like a pound and a half in 90 days, let's say. A thousand watt light is a pound and a half. And it's in about 90 days. You would veg for 30, flower for 60. So you get about a pound and a half every 90 days. A pound and a half every 90 days is a half pound a month. So a thousand watt light on average is a half a pound a month. Now, I don't care if you do one 1,000 or you do a four 600 combo with 400 in veg and 600 in flour. That's a thousand watts worth of electricity. Now a 600 watt light is a pound. It's 66% of a thousand, so you get 66% of the yield. So you get a pound and a half from a thousand, you get a pound from a 600. But if you have a 400 watt veg, 
you now have a two light rotation. And this is a big deal because a one, two, and three light rotation is one of those details that everybody seems to forget. They seem to think it has nothing to do with yield, like it just magically appears without vegging. So when we talk about the yield and the light and the relationship, a 400 watt veg with a 600 watt flower in a two light rotation, you're gonna get a harvest every 60 days. Where in a one light rotation, you get a harvest every 90 days because there's only one light. You have to veg, then flower. But in the two light rotation, you veg and flower at the same time. That way, as soon as flower is done, you go back over to veg, you take them, you put them in flower. Flower is done, you cut them down, you go back over to veg, and you put more in flower. So you're always flowering. But you're still, you still have a thousand watts worth of electricity. So if you have a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower, you're gonna get a pound every 60 days. But is that better than a pound and a half every 90 days? Because they're both a thousand watts of worth of electricity. And if we do the math, we find out that a, that a half a pound a month from a thousand watt light at a pound and a half is a half a pound a month with a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower because one pound every 60 days is the same average as a pound and a half every 90 days. So I don't care if you do a four 600 two light rotation or one 1000 because you can go and buy clones. If you can put 50 fucking clones on your light and you can get them and it's not a problem, do it. You got a thousand watt, you put 50 lights, you veg 50 plants, you veg one week, pound and a half, nine weeks. But if you want a perpetual garden because you don't have access to that, now we're talking about two lights. And I don't care if you do a 4 600 or you do a 600 1000 or you do a 200 watt veg, 400 watt flower. The only thing that changes is yield. Two veg, four flower, half pound. Four veg, six flower, pound. Six veg, thousand flower, pound and a half. Don't care, it just changes yield, not the quality of the bud. It also changes plant count. But let's be clear, if you have a one light rotation, you're going to buy a lot of plants and veg for a very short time. But if you have a two light rotation, you're gonna be vegging for eight fucking weeks. I mean, you go into flower, but the part that I left out was you gotta take the cuttings and put them back in veg. The veg, they root for four weeks, then they veg for four weeks. You got eight weeks to go. That's why in a one light rotation, you put 50 plants under there. But if you have a two light rotation, you're gonna be vegging for eight weeks. And remember what I said earlier? I don't care if you do 100, if you do 50, if you do 50 plants per one light and you veg for one week, or you do 25 plants and you veg for two weeks, or you do 12 plants and you veg for three weeks, or you do four plants and you veg for six to eight weeks. The bigger the plants, the fewer you need. So I don't care about plant count. It only becomes relative. When you have a two, three, or a one light rotation, it only becomes relative based on your rotations. Because if you have a two light rotation, you're gonna be vegging for eight weeks. If you have four in flower, there's no way you can have eight in veg because they're gonna be in veg for eight fucking weeks. They're gonna, they, they can't, you can't get them big enough because you have too many. So what you would find is after four weeks of veg, you'd have to take a plant out. You'd have seven. After five weeks of veg, you'd have to take another plant out because the other one's got bigger. Because remember what I told you earlier? If you have a thousand, if you have a 200 watt light, you can put 10 20 watt plants under it, or you can put five 40 watt plants that are twice as big, or you can put one 200 watt plant. But five 20 watt plants is a two week veg, and four 50 watt plants is a three week veg, and one 200 watt plant is like a six week veg. So the longer the veg, the fewer the plants, the bigger you need, the bigger they are. But you still have to fill up the canopy. It's irrelevant. Plant count is irrelevant. In terms of yield, it's about canopy. Plant count is only relevant based on your rotation. Now you know, I've already told you that a one light rotation, you want to keep the veg as short as possible because you only have one light, right? I mean, you don't want to do a two month veg with a one light rotation because if you've got a thousand watt light and you do a two month veg and a two month flower, you're gonna get a pound and a half in four months. You fail because a pound and a half should be on average three months, half pound a month. So we always have to play that plant count versus veg time versus yield rotation. Now, in a three light rotation, this is where all three lights are the same. Because I tell you in a two light rotation, veg has to be one half flower. 200 watt veg, 400 watt flower, 400 watt veg, 600 watt flower, 6, 1,000, 1,000 watt veg, 2,000 watt flower. You're always gonna double flower from veg or half veg from flower. But in a three light rotation, it's still the same thing if you have a thousand watts in flower to 1,000 watts, you're still gonna have a thousand watts in veg. 
it's still half the amount, 2,000 flower, 1,000 in veg, even though all the lights are the same. So, it's a, it's a relationship. Now, that relationship of a three light rotation, where you start flower A in January, you start flower B in February, then in March, flower A comes down and starts again, then in April, flower B comes down and starts again, where, where you're getting a harvest every month, this is now a three light rotation, and if you have 2,000 watts in flower, you'll have to have 1,000 in veg. And if you have two 600s in flower, you'll have to have a six in veg. And if you have two 400s in flower, you'll have to have a 400 watt veg. Interestingly enough, if we take three 400s, that equals 1,200. However, let's call it at a pretty close to 1,000, right? If you have three 400s in a three light rotation, a 400 watt light is a half pound. A half a pound a month from a three light 400 watt rotation is the same thing as a two light 4-6 combo. A, a pound every 60 days is a half a pound a month. And it's the same yield as a thousand watt light all by itself, where you get a pound and a half in 90 days. So I don't care if you do three 400s, a 4-6 combo, or one 1,000. The yield is all the same. It's all the same. That's why the math of the LEDs boggle me. Because you and I both know your car stereo says the head unit says 300 watts. And we both know if the stereo unit on the car put out 300 watts, it would do it for one second before it caught on fire and burned your car to the ground. That's why you have to use an amp. Because the 300 watts inside the amp, is inside the car stereo head unit, not nearly the same as an amp. It's just not the same equipment. Just like not all cars are the same, even though they may have the same size engine. Just like some people do their jobs better than other people. So what I'm suggesting is there's a lot of relevant here. And everything that we've just discussed, all the relationship between light and yield and plant count, has, and canopy, has absolutely dick to do with nutrients. What I've just done is laid out the schedule of getting the weight that you're supposed to with a few variances for a different light. For instance, if you had a double end light, you probably want a wider area, a larger canopy, and the lights to be further away. Plus the hoods are smaller, so they need more time to spread out. I'm showing you that the distance between this light and this top is too close, and that it's more appropriate to be this far away. So something will have to be done with this. Because if you lose the top or the smell to the heat, it doesn't matter what nutrient or light you use. That's why I tell you, Quality is based on grower talent, and yield is based on light. And that's also why I tell you you can't have one without the other, because you can have enough canopy, and if your dumbass doesn't know to keep the plants too far from the light, further from the light, or your dumbass has the light right on top of the plants, like everybody else tells you to do, then it doesn't matter how many plants you have, how many plants or how big your canopy is. You're you ruined it because of grower talent. It didn't matter what nutrients you use. There are a lot of things that have to go right. And it's all part of growing. Like driving. You get behind someone that doesn't know how to drive and you're like pulling your freaking hair out, right? And that's because there's some art to this along with some science. And all I'm suggesting is that when you come into my store and you know more science and you try to quote facts more than the experience or you don't give the experience enough respect or you come in my store all hot because you read some manufacturer's website, oh, you're gonna buy right here and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. And, and you just spend an enormous amount of money. I mean, I, I don't know what to say other than you literally bought yourself too much vehicle to get started. So one of the reasons that I always tell you guys that LEDs have a 100% failure rate, 100% failure rate, is, is, is there's just some simple math with this. If this is a thousand watt light, it's in a two by three hood. That's six square feet. If you have one of those LEDs, let's say it's a 750 that says it's like a thousand, you're saving 250 watts worth of electricity. But let's say it truly is the same as a thousand watt light. If your LED is, you know, one square foot, you have one-sixth the area, which means you have six times the light. When I told you earlier about the relationship of canopy to light and the size of the hood <clears throat> and the width of the canopy and the total volume of the depth, that was because 
if you take, you have to spread this light over that area. You can't grow this much weight in this much space. A thousand watt light requires a five by five canopy two feet deep to get that yield. And it requires when you go from veg to flower, that if you end veg with 600 watts, you start flower with 600 watts. I mean, if your plants were 600 watts yesterday, it's plant, it's gonna be 600 watts today. So you can't give a 600 watt plant a thousand watts worth of light. That's why growers like this have a thousand watts in veg. So they don't have that loss of momentum when they go into flower. But in the home grow, absolutely not. You would have a 600 watt veg, you would dim the thousand down to 600 and you would start flowering. You wouldn't change the nutrients, you'd thin the plant out, but you definitely wouldn't go into flower, thin the plant out, stretch it so it's not as big as it was before, and then add more nutrients and more light. It's a plant, and it's gonna happen for two weeks. So you really have to slow your roll during that transition to get a canopy. But that relationship between light and canopy stands with an LED, because if you have an LED this big, and it puts out the same amount of light as that, how the fuck are you gonna spread the LED out over the whole area? I personally consider LEDs to be a bigger scam than nutrients. And I like growing with LEDs. I like LEDs. And those few rare customers that do a good job when they grow, and they come in, they'll buy LEDs. These guys already know how to grow. But I never really, even they come and buy two and four at a time because they're growers and they'll replace a room. Even those guys that are successful and know how to grow, and I can grow with LEDs, I like them. Those guys never come back and buy a second round of LEDs. And the LED manufacturers, I guess, can go fuck themselves because I know they're not gonna like this video and I'm sure they're gonna post some video where somebody's growing with an LED. But let me tell you why LEDs, even if you flower with them and they work, because I can veg and flower with them. Although, if the light is very intense, using an LED for veg is an unmitigated disaster because if you have more intense light on little tiny plants, the chance of you killing them is every time. Let me tell you why LEDs are 100% failure. Because these three lights were $125 each, bulb, ballast, and hood. 500 bucks for the lights. So this whole room is 500 bucks, plus the two veg lights were, that came from it, right? So we're at 750 bucks for the light. If you were to buy the equivalent LED, not that bullshit overseas Mars light, a real LED that has the 14 bandwidths, the UVA, the UVB, the UV dick. Even if you buy the main brand high quality ones, <laughs> the two lights in veg plus the four lights in flower here costs five, 750 bucks. You couldn't have bought this LED and you still would have had to buy three more for flower and LEDs in veg just by the nature of the intensity are an absolute disaster. So you would have had to buy six fucking LEDs at 1,500 bucks each. You'd been at $9,000. Even if you finish, and you guys come to my store and you tell me, oh yeah, I'm gonna do multiple harvests, it'll pay itself off. Dude, 750 versus 9,000. Now, even if you don't think that's a failure, I'll give you the next reason it's a failure. There are 4,000 watts in this room, and it's being cooled by one 1,500 watt AC. I said earlier that a 750 LED performs like a thousand. If we had four 750s in here, we would have 3,000 watts of electricity. Now, I said earlier that light has different penetration. T5s don't penetrate as much as HIDs, but they also don't have the same heat signature. So HIDs make heat by converting electricity into a gas that they heat up that then emits light. So these things are super fucking hot. I don't argue that point at all. And CMHs are cooler, and double N's are hotter, and T5's are cooler. And LEDs are cooler because LEDs don't heat a gas to make the light. They convert straight from electricity into light. However, they still use 750 watts worth of electricity. And 750 watts worth of electricity is a lot of fucking heat. And they all have fans on them if they're so hot. Why do they need so many fans? The fans weigh more than the, the heat sinks and the fans weigh more than the lights. You're literally, it's like those beat headphones where they add weights into them. They're literally adding heat sinks. That's why they feel so solid when you lift them. So 
even if you have 3,000 watts worth of LED in this room, you are still going to have to put an air conditioner in the room. And that's a 1,500 watt air conditioner that's doing 4,000 watts. There is no smaller AC unless you buy a window AC, and even then it would be 1,000 watts. So even if you save 250 watts per light from your LED, you still have to pay to cool them. You're not gonna get away without cooling it. There is no free lunch here. Mathematically, T5s are the coolest lights on the market because if LEDs truly put out like a 1,000 watt light, and they truly run 750 watts worth of electricity. Yeah, they save electricity and they save a little heat, but they're one-sixth the area. So there's 600% more light in a smaller area. Now compare that to a T5. So if we took a thousand watts worth of T5, we would literally have two four foot eight bulbs, 16 bulbs, plus a four foot four bulb. We would literally have 20 bulbs times 54 watts. <laughs> 20 bulbs worth of T5s would be two feet, four feet, six feet six by four. We would take a thousand watts worth of light and spread it out over 24 square feet. Now take the light that's not this big and try to spread it out. You'd have to put it 20 feet away because I told you earlier that there's different penetrations between the lights, right? So if an LED is super penetration and it's super concentrated because it's so small, it double fucks you. Then you look at this light, it takes the same amount of light and it spreads it out over six times the area. Two, two by six, it's two by three, it's six square feet versus one square foot. And then if you think about those T5s, it's 24 square feet for the same light. 24 square feet. Now, the thing is, the difference between 24 square feet and 1,000 watts and this 1,000 watts is that if you spread the light out over a greater area, the canopy would not be as tall. So if you took a thousand watts and you spread it out over two four by eight T5s plus a four foot four bolt, your canopy might only be 16 to 18 inches deep. Where this light, your canopy is going to be 22 to 26 inches deep. But if an LED is six times taller, I mean six times brighter, you would be in a three by three area, six feet deep, seven feet deep, and indoors. But doesn't grow like that. Indoors, bud grows in two foot arms. If you want big buds, you gotta grow outdoors. That's why indoors, you want more coverage and less penetration because you have ceiling height. And when you look at this room, these, these lights are hooked to the ceiling. There's no light hangers. And these are still too close. And they're on the floor on trays. That's why I tell you guys, it, the, the plant count relationship to light and room size, when you come to my store, don't tell me how many plants you have. Figure out how much yield you want. Then ask yourself if how, many, how much space you have and how much heat tolerance you have because that's a one duct AC. A one duct AC takes the air out of the room and it blows it outside so it brings more CO2 in. But if you have, if you have a two duct AC, you have to add CO2. So it doesn't matter if you have LEDs or HIDs or T5s, you're going to have to cool them. If you buy a one duct AC, then you're gonna take air out of the room, blow it out, and you'll bring new air in. So you don't have to worry about CO2. In fact, if you've got a one duct AC, don't do CO2. If you do, you put something on this side of the garden and let it come through before the AC blows it out. But if you're gonna seal the room, like if you invested, I guess, $9,000 in lights or $500 in lights, if you've got a pound and a half per light, CO2 will get you 25% more. CO2 will pay for the air conditioner. CO2 is a reimbursement like a manufacturer rebate for using the air conditioner because of the CO2 gets you 25% more. If I've got four lights in here and each one's a thousand watts, that's 4,000 watts, 25% is a thousand watts. The AC is 1,500 watts, so it's a little, not quite. But if I get 25% more yield from a CO2 generator or, you know, if I get 25% more CO2, it's definitely gonna take a chunk out of the AC. You'd also need a little bit bigger space and a little bit wider canopy, you know what I mean? Like, but in all cases, the plant count, plant size, plant height relationship between how many plants you have and if you, how much light you have in veg and are you doing a one, two, three light rotation? Because you guys ask me stuff all the time and you want specific answers. So earlier when I had told you the difference between a one, two light and three light rotation, 
Let me suggest this. If you do a one light rotation with one light like this, you have two choices. You're going to do a very short veg. So you're going to get 50 plants, you'll put them in one gallon pots, veg them for seven days, flower them. You'll start by watering once a week. By the time you're done, you'll probably be watering once every two or three days. Now, in a one gallon pot, it's going to be close because eight weeks in a one gallon is a long time. But you got a lot of plants, so you can't put them in twos because then the space would get too big. So it is what it is. Now, if you have a two light rotation, you're going to be vegging for eight weeks and flowering for eight weeks. So if you have, in, in, in a one light rotation, let's take a step back. If you have a 400 watt light, you're probably going to have 20 plants. If you have a 600 watt light, you're probably going to have 35. If you have a 1000 watt light, you're probably going to have 50. That way you veg for one week and you flower for eight. Now, if you're going to veg for four weeks, you can't do it with a 400. It's really slow with the 400 watt light. It's barely, it's barely enough because cannabis grows 35 watts a week. Four week, 12 weeks is 420 watts. So you barely have enough. But with a 600 watt light, you probably veg six plants for four weeks in one. Then you transplant into a three and flower for eight. Now, if you have 1,000 watt light, if you're going to veg for four weeks, if you had six under 600, you're probably going to have eight or 10, depending on the strain, some grow faster, under 1,000 watt light in the four week veg and an eight week flower. But now you have two lights, so you're going to have an eight week veg and an eight week flower. So if you had 10 plants vegging for four weeks under 1,000 and six plants vegging for four weeks under 600, if you have an 800, if you have a eight week veg, you have twice as much veg. So not only are we going to be transplanting once during veg, because veg is so much longer. So not only are you going to have less plants because you're going to be in veg longer, they're also going to be bigger. So one of the things that you have to consider now is if you have a two light rotation, where you had six plants under a 600 before with a four week veg, you're probably going to have three plants under a 400 and it's going to be an eight week veg. So they'll have time to get bigger. So the same light in a different rotation will have a different amount of plants. And if you have three lights and there are three 600s, you're probably going to go back to a four week veg, eight week flower. So you'll have 12 plants in veg, six in each of the flowers every month four of the plants, six of the, one of the flower tents and six of the plants will come down and you'll pull six plants out of veg. It looks like this, you'll have six plants in red cups. So you'll take down a flower, you'll take some cuttings. The, the ones that were just cuttings will now go into the veg one gallon buckets. What was in the one gallon bucket will then go into the flower tent in the three gallon bucket and next month when you harvest the other tent, you'll take that tent down, you'll take the veg plants that are in the one and you'll put them in flower, you'll take more clones, you'll put them in red cups and what was in the red cup will now go in the one gallon, but that's a four week veg. See, if you have a two light rotation, you got eight weeks in veg. You may very well go from a one to a three in veg and then into a seven in flower. That's why I tell you on a two light rotation, even though it's a 600 watt light in flower, you may only have three plants instead of six. And if it's a thousand watt light, you may very well have six plants instead of 10. Or you may have four plants or two plants or three plants. All I'm suggesting is that the relationship of bucket size to plant count and frequency of watering has more to do with yield than anything else. Because you can't put 12 of these plants under one of these lights. We can both see that would work because three plants almost has a full. I would have suggested four. That's that relationship between plant count and bucket size. And more importantly, if you have a two light and you go, you start in a one, you're watering once a week, you finish four weeks later, you're watering every three days, you put in a three, you got four weeks to go and veg. So now you're in a three. So you start at nine days, and four weeks later, you water every three or four days. And then you put them in a seven. So you go from a three to a seven. So four days would become like 11 days. And now you got eight weeks worth of flour. That's why you don't go from a three to a five. Because it doesn't buy you enough time. It's too small a space. That would be like supersizing your drink from a 14 to a 16 ounce. It's not a big enough jump. It's too tight to make the transfer. So. That's, that's why before we even started getting into anything below or anything that was going right or wrong with these plants, I really wanted to go over that relationship between light and yield and the different kinds of lights and the different factors of lights relative to their penetration and their canopy and their intensity and the amount of electricity that they have to draw and the heat. And basically, this garden rescue is like most of the garden helplines that I do. I really try to help straighten you guys out on the relationship between canopy and yield. Because if you don't have enough plant to fill the canopy, 
how the fuck are you going to get the yield regardless of which nutrients you use? That's why I tell you a three part nutrient, one grow, one flower, and like a cow mat. If you can make those three things look good, any grow, any flower, and a bottle of cow mat, because the number one problem in a healthy garden is not enough mat. If you can make those three things look good, and when you come to my store, I sort of sell you a five thing, a five part. It's one grow, one flower, a bottle of cow mat, a bottle of sweet, because you're going to start using sweet soon, and a bottle of great white microbes. And I do that because if you can make those five things look good, you can buy whatever 17 part bullshit, copycat, name brand, spend their money on marketing nutrients you want. You can do whatever the fuck you want. When your canopy looks good and you get the yield you want from your life, maybe it'll make a difference. But until then, if you can't make one grow, one bloom, a bottle of cow mag and sweet with some great white microbes look good because your light's too close, doesn't matter how many parts your nutrients is, or your light's too small, and it's 600% too much light in 160 area, so it's like 64 million times too much light. That's why I tell you that there, 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 there's really only three problems. And it's a trick that I do. I don't teach you guys how to grow. I teach you guys how to not fail. Because it turns out the plants already know how to fucking grow. You don't have to worry about that. All you gotta do, lean the fuck alone and not kill them. That's what comes through my store. It's never a nutrient problem, it's never a light problem. I mean, sure, those things may burn your plants, but it's always the grower who misinterprets their use. And there are so many reasons, even if you finish with an LED, that it'll just kill you, just cost. The personality of the people that come in my store that, that do LEDs, they're the ones who think they're gonna get something for nothing, even more than the average guy who comes in and thinks he's gonna get something for nothing. This is an art, as much of a science. And if you don't fill up the canopy, it doesn't matter what nutrients you use or what light you use. And I know I beat up on nutrients, but that's because they put themselves out there. I know I beat up on LEDs, but that's because they put themselves out there and they tell you how awesome they are. I'm just a dude who works at a store and sees a thousand growers a year. I can tell you the statistical probability. I notice I told you LEDs are fantastic, and yet they have a 100% failure rate. And I like growing with them, and I can use them. And the 100% failure rate had nothing to do with the light. It has to do, I mean, size, and I mean, you can still interpret it, but it has to do with the grower and the cost of it and the fact that you don't understand the equipment that supports it because if you have to buy an AC, who cares? Once you buy an AC, why would you spend the money on the lights? Especially when you can do CO2 and do 20% more. Especially when LEDs have so many known statistical problems from the customers that come through my store. Perhaps when you're a great grower, you might want a 17 part nutrient and a 500 watt LED that acts like a 1000 watt LED that runs with magically no heat for $9 that you can buy on eBay. I got no idea, man. You guys invent a lot of shit. What I'm suggesting is that cannabis is an eight-week flower. And whether you do a one-week veg with lots of plants or you do, on average, three plants, four plants per light with a longer veg, I don't care. None of it has anything to do with anything if you don't get a canopy full of buds. And Putting the light closer is not going to get you more buds unless it was too far away, which it never is because you can already see it's too close. Growing cannabis is never what you think it is when you come in my store. The statistical probability is not one nutrient over the other. The statistical probability is too much light, too much water, and too many nutrients. Why? Because one day in your life is like 12 weeks to a plant. They can't handle the attention. That's why I tell you you should be in a bucket so big you're in there we're watering once a week. There is no reason for you to be in your garden every day. If you're in your garden more than once or twice a week, you mooch your plants to death. They can't take the attention. I know you want to love them and that you think this is mystical and it's some sort of religious thing that has mystical properties. but. It's, it's plant, man. It takes 12 fucking weeks and there's nothing you can do. And the more you mushy it, the less you get. Because you can't see it grow. You have to come back in a week and then you're like, oh my God, it's got fucking bigger. But if you come in at 9 o'clock and 10.30 and you sit here and you pick this leaf off and you smoke this bowl and you do this or that, that's what all the guys that come to my store tell me that's killing their shit. Oh man, 
got 100 cc's of water every day. What the fuck? How can you give it 100 cc's of water every day when you're only in there once a week? It's not that you can't look at them or you shouldn't enjoy them. All I'm suggesting is that it's a statistical probability game and it's a trick that I do because I don't have to teach you how to grow. All I have to do is teach you how not to have too much light, too much water, too many nutrients. What to do when you don't have enough mag in a healthy garden and how to kill bugs. Those are the only five problems that ever come through my store. Everything else is a bro. You put the light too close. You did this, you did that, you did blah, 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 blah. It has, it's all marketing. I mean, I work at the Hydra store. I hear it all. That's why when you look at my No More Grow More cards, they're all the problems you're going to have. I already know. Just like when you go to work and you're like, someone starts talking, you're like, oh, heard this before. I heard it. All you have to do is avoid the mistakes and you will have some modicum of success. Then refine your technique and we'll continue to get better. That's why you should always run your plants at 75%. If you try to do 101%, plants grow with the law of minimum. Light, water, CO2. As soon as you run out of one, everything else stops. The process backs up. So if you do too much, if the process doesn't work. And since there's no gauge to know where 75 or 85 or 91% is, 75% is a pretty good way to start. This plant right here, I would say, when we look at the buds a little more closer, is running at 100% light. I think these buds that are further away from the light, I think they look a little better. They don't look as little tight. They seem to be a little wider. You can start to see the difference in the buds from the ones that are in the middle. You can see the difference of the leaves when you look at the outside. These are face up toward the light. Some of them are face away. Some of them are rolling down. Some of them get miniaturized like this. Look how big these are. Look how miniature these are. So there are clues to your light. And all I'm suggesting is that you can judge the clues and work backward. Because whatever you see today happened last week, started last week. Look how far away this leaf is and look how big it is. Look at how far away this right underneath leaf is and look at how much smaller it is. You can see the color in the difference of the leaves from the outside of the plant from the inside of the plant. These are all clues that you can use. There are different strains, sativas, indica leaves, but the clues are still the same, too much light. Things miniaturize. Look at how big this sativa leaf is. <laughs> I'm just saying that the ones on the top are never going to get this big because this is front and center. And this one is way here on the outside, it's face up. I mean, you can really see the difference and when you hold it up to the light. No, you can't because they're too bright but you can really see the difference in the size of those leaves. And those are the visual clues. And if you're not sure, make the, put the light a little further away because if it's a little further away, at least it won't be too much light. Might it be a little less? Yes. But if you ran your plants at 70% instead of 100%, you're guaranteed success. If you run it at 100%, the chance you're gonna kill your shit is pretty high. So this is all a relationship. And notice none of these things had a brand name on the bulb. Even though I always recommend Ushio if you're gonna do HIDs. And if you're gonna do T5s, I like those Nickel City HOs. And if you're gonna do LEDs, I like kind LEDs. I'm not opposed to LEDs. They're appropriate in some split in some places, in, in some places. Especially if you get a deal on the light, they're totally appropriate. I like growing with them. I buy them for my store used, I make money off them. I have no objection to them in terms of right price, right space, anything else. I mean, if you have to pick two kids up from school, a motorcycle is an absolute disaster. Because when I went to pick up the second one, they said, where's the first one? And then you've got to deal with the problem. So not everything is appropriate, even though it's awesome. So when you come in and you say, what's the best? The fuck do I know? Are you in a corner? Are you in a little two by two? Look how big this plant is. I mean, how are you going to grow like in those automatic grow things for $2,500 or those three in one $6,000 tents like they made that video for? They seem so appealing. How the fuck are you gonna put a plant like this after 12 weeks? I mean, think about it. This is three weeks into flower, and I said it was a six week veg, eight week veg. Even with an eight week veg, this plant's 11 weeks old. So, even if you took one cutting and flowered it in a week, you'd still have a nine week old plant. It's gonna get pretty fucking big. You have to consider that. It's a 12 week process. 
Nothing's going to speed that up. You could get an auto flower, but then if you get an auto flower, what's the trade off? The trade off is if they don't veg as long, you need more. So if you had six plants that you vegged for six weeks and your auto flowers finish in six weeks, probably need 12 plants or 16 to fill the space. Why? Because they don't get as big. See what I'm saying? Because you have to fill the space and the size of the plant is related to veg time and light bucket size, the relationship between watering and the frequency. See how all of that plays together? And yet none of that had to do with the name of the bulb or the type of the light or the nutrients you used or whether you were in smart pots, which I think is a great idea, or whether you started with Clonex or whether you used Great White or whether you started in a turbo cloner or you started in a root riot or however, you got 12 fucking weeks. The dumbest thing I hear people do is start in a paper towel. What the fuck? It's a seed. It's been going on a lot longer than you. A paper towel? This is 12 weeks if you start from a clone. This is 16 weeks if you start from a seed. What's paper towel gonna do? Does it save you a day? 16 times seven is 170 and 42. So, I mean, it's 112 days. What are you gonna do, save a day? You're gonna put the light closer and save a day? The chance of you killing your shit by putting the light closer is 100%. The chance of you saving a day is zero. Plants require less, not more. And that's the biggest problem that comes through my store, is more, too much light, too many nutrients, too much water. Those are the things that kill people's garden. Those are the things you have to watch out for. Because if you don't do anything wrong, what the fuck do you need to know how to grow for? The plants do it all by themselves. Woo, that was a lot. I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for watching. If you want to pick up my book, you can find them on eBay, Amazon, or on my website, thegrowboss.com. You can get the No More Grow More cards. If you've got any questions, if you like Garden Rescue, and you want to talk about your garden and send me pictures, there's a consult on my website, and you can click on there. It's $49 an hour. As always, when you've got this much money invested, call before you quit. I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for watching.